I'm going to call the meeting back to order. And um, due to the power coming back on and uploading the information that we need, um, I would like a motion to change the order of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Discussion and possible action on hearing officer. So um, this subject came up several months ago with a conversation between Dr. Tabrito and I. And many districts are moving to this. And she's going to speak more to the um, roles and responsibilities and everything in regard to a hearing officer. What this would it really be is in the event of a expulsion hearing, we would have um, a hearing officer who would actually be hearing the case and making the final call. The reason why this has been brought up with our board and with other boards is we are a very small town, right? So when something comes to the level of being an expulsion, usually you hear something going on in town, right? So we have kids in the school system. It's very possible that you might know a child or you might have prejudgment about a family. So this takes all of that kind of out and um, then we as a board choose a hearing officer who would be the person that would be doing the mitigation. What? Go ahead, Laurel. Is this, we hire this one person and this is always our representative or do we have to go out each time? You don't have to go out each time. The reason why I wanted to bring this up now is because we don't have any expulsion hearings coming up in the very near future, right? So the time to pick out a hearing officer is when our minds are clear and when we can think about this in a logical order rather than it being, you know, if an expulsion hearing can come up and within two weeks you could be sitting at a table. You can't make a good decision within when you're in a crisis situation. So, yep. How much does this cost? Okay, so she's going to go over all of this. What tonight is, is going to be going over roles and responsibilities of a hearing officer. If everybody is agreeable, then what will happen as the next step is um, I will ask for a vote to move it to personnel and negotiations to look at a contract and look at interviewing hearing officers. So is everybody kind of clear on why we're doing this now, the basics of a hearing officer, and we're, we're not picking one tonight, and we're not going to talk about the actual charges. That's going to be up to you, you guys on PNN. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yeah. yeah. All right, with all of that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Tabrito. Um, you do have that clause in policy already. And just to add to what Patty was indicating, because we're so small, that decision has impact. And you then become very much familiar with who was at that table. You might see the family in a grocery store. You might see them at a future event. There are all kinds of reasons to focus on the education of all the other children, right? Setting policy, making sure we have a budget, making sure we're fiscally responsible. But it is very hard when you have children in the school or neighbors that attend the school it, and the likelihood of having to recuse yourself from being at that situation where you can truly be objective, it's really hard to do that. And so I would definitely agree actually meeting a person who can answer all your questions 
and really process how it works in other districts and then it's not the board's responsibility to move somebody out of the school district. Your responsibility is just all the kids who are here and you have this objective person who's very expeditious, very effective, because I've talked to a colleague who's a superintendent who highly, highly recommends this. He's very much experienced. What is the um, normal experience? And this is for the public too, because we are recorded and so if somebody ever asks us, they can refer back to this meeting. What, what um, are the qualifications in general of a hearing officer? They're also an attorney. They're also an attorney. The that has to be. So they okay. know the laws. This is what, ha you know, they know this inside and out. And usually, I'm hearing within an hour, a situation is resolved with a family depending on circumstances. So I would welcome the opportunity for you to ask every single question you have of someone who lives this um, in other districts so that you can feel comfortable about making an informed decision. So just to your point that you said they're an attorney, um, and usually the situation would be resolved within an hour after talking to the family. So this hearing officer is also the mediator, which would happen before you get to the expulsion hearing? Right at the expulsion hearing. If they, if the family has an attorney, they're dealing with that, but it's not dragging the district board of ed through mud or anything. It's, it does really does create some a safety net in that regard. Does the district or the superintendent's office have a need to um, pay for a separate attorney to represent them? Only in extenuating circumstances. So I think you should ask that very direct question based on their experience. How often does that happen? Um, so we would still... You wouldn't be a part of the decision though. It wouldn't be the Board of Ed members that were sitting at the table. So that is where the hearing officer kind of steps in. So the board still has a board attorney, right? and if the superintendent needs an attorney, the superintendent still has an attorney. The hearing officer is really our, um, our representative, is our attorney for making that decision. Are they educationally? Yes. Are they yes, educational they're. attorneys? Yes. Yes. So that's where in personnel and negotiations, you'll be determining what goes into those contracts and then going over the qualifications and then bringing back to the full board a name of a hearing officer that you would like us to vote upon if you chose to go that route. How many candidates would there be? Yeah, and that's up to personnel and, nego and negotiations. So we're going to run this, this, if we agree to this, we would be running this this summer. They'd be up and running by August. We don't have any expulsion hearings coming right. up. And no, I understand right. that, but we want them in place before the school year starts. Right. Correct. And then, um, just so we understand, we don't have access to student records, you know, there's no divulging of, of information to us when we show up at these hearings. Does this hearing officer have any access to any information? Only what's presented at that hearing. Right. So like when you go to the hearing, remember, you have a case file exactly. that is given to you and in that case file has all the evidence. That case file, instead of coming to us, would go to the hearing officer. And that's all the information. And then, yeah. that's correct. Mm -hmm. Does this hearing officer also work for the state of Connecticut, or would they be an independent attorney? They're independent attorney. They're independent attorney. Um, Wait, Sean has a question. So, so, what kind of, so when an instance happens, what, what information, like how would or would we know at all that things are happening? I would tell you that there was going to be an expulsion here, and you should at least know that right. and the result of it. Right. You should at least know that, right. but you wouldn't be compromised at the table sure. of having been the deciding individual. We won't know that. the name or the situation of the expulsion. All we will know is 
that an expulsion hearing because they have to put out an agenda for it. Right. And that's what you would get, yeah. you know. And then the result of that, again, is public. Yeah. And so that we would get that, that gotcha. the board moved to expel a student in, you know, whatever school yeah. per the agreement. And even at that, I mean, when we even look at that, we never say who the student is or anything right. of that nature either. Right. Um, I am remarkably uncomfortable with this. Um, that may be nothing more than the fact that I'm sort of old school, and I understand that. But with a different superintendent and a different chairperson, they could bury a lot of stuff that we'd never know about that the board would never find out about. If the kids involved in the most recent incidents that were of such concern, for example, were to be expelled, they could, if they were skillful and it hadn't gotten out publicly the way it did, uh, they could hide it all and we'd never know what was going on. I have a major problem with that. I also have a gut feeling that it is the responsibility of the Board of Ed and ducking the responsibility because it's uncomfortable is not appropriate. So uh, let, let me just finish. Okay. Um, recusing oneself is not a problem. If I know someone and I shouldn't be involved, I say, Patty, I can't do this one. It's real simple. And people need to be expected to do that. We could if you want, put it in policy that if there is a personal connection with, uh, with a, a situation involving an expulsion, that person, that board member needs to recuse um, if that's a concern. But I, I, I understand why. I'm also uncomfortable with the image of defending at the next budget season the fact that we had, say, for example, two instances where we had three attorneys working. How do we defend this when we could be doing it ourselves and not paying for it? So I have a hard time with that. So let me kind of go on to a couple of things. One, there have been many instances where something has happened in one of the schools and nowadays with social media and like the recent one, all, every single one of us would have had to recuse ourselves because of the public comments that came in and because of social media putting out kids' names. So at that point then, you are in big trouble because you now don't have anybody or a method to go through an expulsion hearing. I, I don't know the, that I agree with that. The mere fact that a kid's name is put in social media by someone else doesn't mean we have to recuse. I, they're two I, completely separate things. I don't think so because when you see social media and you're seeing different things about a student or about a case, you might have prejudgment. And so I think that it's worthy of having the personnel and negotiation kind of talk about it. I understand the lack of wanting to give up some of the power, however... It's not a question no, of power, it's a question of accepting responsibility. Okay, responsibility. However, I really have to look back at the number of times that we've had expulsion hearings and the amount of chatter that has come about on each one of those. And it is very, very typical when you have something that's going to get to an expulsion. Let's take it as something that's vandalism to a building, okay? And there's vandalism to one of the schools or something like that. I would guarantee you that someone's going to be tapping on, Kira, you're my neighbor, you know, and I just want you to know, I know him, and he has been awful since day one. Or, Jackie, you're my neighbor, and I want to tell you, this child has been an angel, and the parents are, are well-known in town. So I just want you to know that. So some of those things do come in to when you have to do an expulsion hearing. We're a very small town. 
Patty, if they can arrest and convict a former president of the United States I and have it like go through the right process here. That's appropriately, not what we're here. We're because they're able. No, let me finish. That because they're able to actually seat an objective jury, then we could do this job. I'm, I, I've, had my, I've said my piece, okay. I'm not going to say okay. more. The only thing is, I also want to be very, very careful that you don't overlook it because of responsibility and then get turned around and the board winds up with a lawsuit because they went forward with an expulsion and they parent turns around and says, I spoke to you two, and you know, and you knew me. And now we wind up in a lawsuit. So I, I think it's something we really need to kind of... I just have a question. Yeah. On average, how many expulsion hearings get to the point of the board? in front of the board? If they're being expelled, they come in front of the board. But in so the history, let's say like the last five years, like how many do you think there's actually been a year? For I've been involved with five. In how many years? So I've been on the board five years. One a year. So, so we'll say an average of like upwards of two expulsion hearings a year. And if we're talking most. like cost of that, it's to me in Pretty the beginning minimal. it sounded like there would be like all of this cost but like if if the the role of this expulsion officer is to just show up when when it's actually you know postpone when postpone right. postpone actually shows up that's when they start being charging for them and i believe it was dr Brito that said it could be resolved in a, an average of an hour or a couple hours a couple hours times two a year is not going to be a significant budget. I issue. would acknowledge that. So, right. I would and, that. and don't you always have your attorney present right. anyway? You've never had an expulsion hearing. It was the concern paying, of right. having an extra attorney. And you wouldn't have but an she's extra right. If, right. If, if we're doing that for you, right. the cost is not the issue, and right. I understand. Just to put that. No, you're right. So, so and. In some ways, and I understand what you're saying about the responsibilities and everything, I, I look at this also kind of as a double legal protection for the board. Because if, sometimes expulsion hearings can get really, really nasty, and there's hard feelings about it, parents might want to come back and sue, you have a hearing officer who is an attorney acting in a with legal way and our attorney as well, I, I think it gives us a little bit more protection. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to move this forward to personnel and negotiations and actually go over contractual things, more details, talk about if you want to interview. You don't have to go with it afterwards, but this is a thought. Right now, I'm seeing more cons than pros, and I need to see more pros than cons. Okay. Um, pros being that it's going to protect the board legally, mm -hmm. and thankfully, it's expulsion hearings are not a frequent occurrence. Right. But to Jim's point, when you're removing the authority of the board, and it's assuming that members can be compromised. Right. I, for one, try to avoid engaging at all in social media yep. because of that very okay. reason. And I don't like it when people assume that I can be compromised because right. that is the whole point of being on the board is that we have a okay. code of ethics that we, have, we live with integrity. The third is the added cost. So for me, I, I, what is more important that we protect the board legally or looking at the budget, looking at what this, you know, conveys as a message to the public, and also what our role is. So right. I just want, I'm putting that out there for all of us to think about. Can you go over more of like the role is for cost? When it well, it would be in things? place of bringing the board's attorney. Because you always bring 
board's attorney into it, you never are present without the attorney. Right. So that would eliminate that aspect of it. So. Well, I guess what I would say to this is that, you know, as far as the social media thing goes, I, I, in our most recent experience, I was very fortunate to find myself not involved in that until I reposted Teresa's Juneteenth celebrations around the state right. flyer, which engaged several people that I knew, so I saw posts in that regard because mm -hmm. it brought it directly back to that experience. So although there was nothing really sort of inflammatory in there, just by that simple step, I found myself exposed to the conversation. The other piece that I had in my own personal experience is that when Russia invaded Ukraine, there was a family in town who is from Moldova that is considered, they consider themselves Russian and were offended that the high school history teacher was teaching about students that Russia invaded Ukraine and that they needed to be teaching a more equal story on both sides. I didn't solicit this. This, pe this person called me at my home. So this was not something that I would typically engage in, and I didn't engage. I redirected her to speak with the principal, to speak with the teacher, or speak with the superintendent at the time. So even if we try not to engage with social media, or there are still methods, and Patty's mm -hmm. point to the grocery store, it is a very good one. We see these families, we engage with these families, whether we realize it or not. We are out there in this very small right. little community and the exposure is real. And right. it happens when you're not even trying. And it happened to me twice without even trying. And so Laura, let me ask you a quick question. Are you saying that's a reason we should do a hearing officer or we shouldn't do a hearing officer well, or I it's irrelevant? I'm not sure where you're... Well, I, I'm not sure what you're driving at. My point, I, I feel like a hearing officer is something that we should consider. The expulsion hearing that I sat in on, which, you know, was a few years ago, I did feel some pressure in that because the, the circumstances involved special needs students, and of course I immediately zoned in on defending the special needs student, and that's not my role. I am there supposed to be unbiased, but I couldn't help it. I didn't way in that way. I tried very hard to meter myself, but at the same time it was hard. So I think that having an unbiased, unaffiliated person who doesn't have access to the student records, doesn't know the families in town, doesn't go to the same grocery store. You know, just for the record, they do have access to the uh, the student records. That's part of what you bring to a, uh, expulsion. Yeah, but they're going to get the to discipline us, record and they're going to get the so, attendance record. So I That's don't, part of it. I don't want to get They do too, have that. I'm just trying to weigh my thing so that we can make a decision if we're going really, to do it or not. Right. I, I don't want to get too, too far into this in a public meeting where it should probably go to personnel and negotiation where it is kind of hashed out a little bit more in executive session as far as when we start talking about student records and everything. But Well, we're talking so, about process, not student right, records. I, and I understand. I just want to be careful here. Just want to be careful. So, Sean, what do you think? So you, you're saying no. I'm a no. Okay. I'm a no. You're a no? I'm a no. Okay. I'm a yes. I'm a yes. I feel that while it's been mentioned that it protects the board, I feel like it would also protect the student in the space for an expulsion by having somebody just take in all the information that's presented as opposed to being on the board and involved in the community. So I'm a yes. I mean, yes, to at least look more into right. it. I'm not saying yes, let's do it. Exactly. I'm saying yes, That's let's get yes, more come information. Back to the full board. I'm a yes with more information. Okay. So we're three, three, and as chair, I'm going to say I would like to move this to I'm going to be a yes, um, and I would look for a motion to have policy. I'm not policy. 
uh, personnel and negotiation look into options of hearing officers, roles and responsibilities, and costs associated Okay. And bring back a full report to the board before entering into any right. contracts. How's that? Um, just so personnel one will do clarifying an question. Right. Okay. I'm sorry, just one clarifying. Is, is this, they're going to go and talk to a multiplicity of people and get some ideas about how this works? Or is this, we're going to go look out and see who we want to hire? It, they're going to go out, look for roles and responsibilities, and costs, and um, basically who does it, what have experiences been, have happened. So they may go call for hearing officers that are known in the state and say, how is this gone, or something of that that nature and then kind of bring back the findings to the full board then we'll kind of decide from there where we want to go. Okay. Does that that's sound fine. reasonable? That's, yep, okay. yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. A second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. So Laurel set up the insurance for the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Next. We are going you want back. To come to, I'll Tim. come to your table. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. I want to welcome um, Tim Cahill from the Ray Board here to um, give us a Ray Board presentation. Thank you, Mr. Cahill, for your flexibility and for your patience this evening with moving things around. No problem. I, uh, I'm sorry, my technology, I, I wasn't aware of the technology. I got here a little bit early and tried to figure it out. Uh, and of course, there was no electricity, so that really didn't help. Um, but uh, the presentation you have uh, that uh, Superintendent uh, Tabrito sent to you earlier today, uh, or had you have a paper too, um, is pretty current. There's, I know I'm around education people. There's some typos in there that have been since corrected. You'll get an updated copy uh, shortly. But I, I think I have met almost everyone here uh, through some way, shape, or form. Uh, but as mentioned, my name is Tim Cahill, and I'm kind of here in two roles tonight. I manage and have managed for about 15 years uh, several endowments that have been uh, gifted to the town over the last century, believe it or not. Um, and uh, so we'll touch on, on those, uh, three of those. And uh, I am also vice president of the Ray Board. So what I did is I put together a kind of a brief summary, a little bit of history on each of the endowments that we're looking at right now, a little bit of the current situation and how they contribute um, to the Board of Ed. So the four funds, as um, Chairman mentioned, the Ray Board and Ray School, um, the Purple Fund, which going through the budget process, you've probably seen the contribution from the Purple Fund. Uh, the Amos Shepherd Scholarship, which is an art scholarship. Um, <clears throat> and then the Isidore Sprecher Scholarship and Grant Fund. Uh, the Sprecher Fund is fairly new. Uh, came in late during COVID uh, from Cornell University. Um, and they had absolutely no information and no documentation. They just said, here you go. So the only thing we had is it came in in two pieces. So uh, Isidore and Sylvia Sprecher were a um, very th philanthropic couple. He was a veterinarian uh, at, from Cornell, and he is one of the all-time leading philanthropists at Cornell. Um, he founded what's now called the Flower Sprecher Library of Veterinary Medicine. It's probably the leading veterinary uh, library in the world. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, there's a number of stories out there, um, uh, a number of uh, newspaper articles and, and things uh, from Cornell University, and he has family that lives in town. He's actually buried at Rod Fizadek Cemetery up the street. Um, so th the gift was in two parts. Uh, one, to fund an annual scholarship to a math or science 
uh, student moving forward uh, to college. Um, the second was in support of math, math and science learning in East Haddam. The, the fund is broken up into two pieces. Um, because of when the money came in, we really haven't built the committee yet uh, that will support this. Uh, uh, Superintendent and I have spoken about it and we're working on putting that together. Um, the fund is worth right now combined about three hundred and thirty thousand dollars and like I said it's broken in two pieces and they're almost identical. We did give out the scholarship the other night. Uh, the scholarship I think is a thousand dollars. It should be more and that will be part of my conversation when we get a, a, a group together. The way we build these endowments and have built the other ones that you'll see tonight is we usually take about 4% of the trailing 16 quarters. We average the balance of the account for 16 quarters. We take 4 to 4.5% 4 of that, depending on what the prevailing interest rate is. So in this case, that would run about $8,000 a year. And that would be split between scholarships and grants um, to the math science education process. Okay. You'll see this uh, similar exhibit uh, to this in each one of the uh, um, funds that we'll talk about. Uh, what happens is all these funds are run under what's called an investment policy statement. Okay, Rules and parameters under which I'm responsible to manage the money. Right? So we don't have all, you know, AI stocks or all treasuries. You know, we're somewhere in between. And that we go through that balance. This portfolio right now is about two-thirds stock, one-third fixed income, which is in, on the conservative level of the other portfolios that we run. Go ahead. Um, the, where does the money come into? Is that going directly into the town? Like, where do you guys write the checks out to for, for the portion? This, the so other? this fund specifically has right. not doled out any money yet. Okay. 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 The other funds coincidentally are written it's written in the document that it yeah. goes to, to the, the town, town directly to the treasurer okay 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 and so that's how they're set up we okay. do have them broken out by tax id number right? okay so the, the funds that manage for the municipality are under the this town tax id number all these funds are under this the tax id number of the board of ed or the superintendent's office okay 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 So the next fund is the Amos Shepard Arts Scholarship. So Amos Shepard was a famous East Adam person, um, antiquarian, uh, antiquarian. One of the high school seniors several years ago wrote a nice biogra biographical piece about him when he uh, actually donated the money. Um, and especially with chandeliers and English lighting, um, he he has pieces that he sold that are in the White House and the State Department and uh, several Washington museums. Uh, if you've been to the Historical Society building, the barn building in the back, uh, that big chandelier that hangs in the middle, he actually purchased and donated to the Historical Society. So it was pretty impressive. He had, um, what was the name of the gift shop? Something Hollow. I can't believe I can't remember. Oh, Parsnip. Parsnip Hollow or something Parsnip like that. Hall. It was where the. Um, the Seraph. Yeah, the yeah, Seraph. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it was down across from the, uh, Good, the Goodspeed Opera House in what's the, what was the La Vida Gustosa. Yeah. It was, that space was divided into two pieces and his antique well. shop was in the front. And so he yeah. was always sitting behind the cash register in a chair and he could tell you everything about anything that was in the store, where yeah. he got it, when he got it. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, cool guy. Yeah. So he was also a very famous patron of the arts. So his goal for this scholarship was to be given uh, to a senior that is continuing an education in the arts, which uh, and the student is actually picked by the arts teachers in the high school each year without application. So they choose a student um, that they will feel uh, will benefit from it the most. Uh, and we've actually included, not that this is surprising I guess, but we've actually included writing. So if somebody's going to college as a, a writer, um, that those individuals are included as well. And his goal was that at some point, the people who received the scholarship would come back and share their talent with the community. Uh, so that's one of the things I've always 
Yeah. I'd like to get, now we've done this for about eight years, so there's some students out there who've done some pretty impressive things. And we just gave the scholarship the other night. And the, the original um, uh, gift was about $277,000. And uh, you know, as of the close of business on the 11th, uh, we've got $363,000 in there. So the portfolio has grown considerably. And we've been giving out scholarships. So we've given out uh, eight or nine scholarships so far. And those are four-year renewable. So this year, the scholarship will be $2,900 for, for each student, each of the four students we have um, receiving the scholarship. I, I, at the risk of sounding silly, I'm getting confused. Which fund are we talking about right now? Oh, this is the Shepherd Scholarship. The Shepherd. OK, that's yeah, what I thought. And they get four students a year? No, what happens is you, it's renewable for four years. So, so you can get it freshman to a junior. Yeah, okay, right. yep. So freshman, so, sophomore, junior, and senior yeah. year, yeah. they get that. Yeah. And do they get it automatically, or do they have to reapply? How does that go? Well, yeah. So they they notify the school. We don't. I don't see any school records, but the, the school confirms that they're still in the same major, that they're still pursuing a degree in the arts, um, and then they let me know, and I send off a check. Right. So you handle that. Totally. I handle all the money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens is I don't issue checks prior. Like a lot of the scholarships are given, handed out at graduation. Right. The ones that I manage are contingent on the student staying at school. Okay. Is there any um, anything in there about keeping up GPAs or anything of that nature? You no. know, we're I not going to make monitor grades. Okay. You know, once they right. receive it, you know what? And that's, that's up to that's the teacher. Exactly. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, you know, I don't need to be that in the, in the, uh, yeah. in the, yeah, in the mark that much. Right. So the, the, the Portfolio's done well. One of these days, we're gonna we're gonna find a way to rally the people to come back and, and do something for us because we have musicians and artists and writers that we've given the scholarship to. So I think it'd be a great idea. Because that's about like you said, it's about eight years. So I yeah. wonder, I wonder if we could reach out to the art teacher and, and get see the names. and get the recipient names um, for the past eight. Oh, he should be looking at uh, I, I have them. I do have yeah, them, but um, school, Mom, right? Megan, uh, yeah. Sarah yeah. has them all. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know Amy, right. Amy and That's Sarah right. keep all that down. Yeah. So okay. maybe we can invite uh, them back. Yeah. You know, and yeah, give it'd be fun. Us, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could probably tie it. You know, I, my thought was you, oh, you could always tie it to something else, one of the yeah. school concerts or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, sure. I think oh, I, kind of a neat thing. Yeah, I agree. So the next fund is the purple fund. So, um, I've been managing the Purple Fund for almost uh, 15 years, 20, 2009. Um, this fund was created under Article 4 of the, the will of Arthur J. Sullivan. Um, and I put the quote in here because I, I like the continuity of it, but I, I give a bequeath to the town of East Adam the sum of $400,000 into trust as a fund to be known as the Alfred E. Purple Memorial Fund, the principal of which is to be kept permanently invested in the income from there is to be used for the maintenance support of East Haddam High School situated in the village of Moose. I just think about the forethought of that um, often. But um, Purple and Silliman owned the dry goods store that was in the original town of Moose. All right. Judge Purple was the probate judge and I think was the brain trust behind all of these things. I think he was the first person that really motivated people to do this yeah. um, and he was uh, the probate judge and he was the bus business partner to Mr. Silliman. Um, upon Judge Purple's death he left Silliman uh, over a million dollars. Mr. Silliman then turned that money not only into the successful dry goods store but a company called uh, Undyne Twine which had three factories along the Salmon River. A lot, you know, that's what the, the reservoirs yeah, power. Some of that wine that some was used in making nets for fishing. Right? That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah. there, from the from the lower so reservoir, right. um, you know, that you pass by the the landfill and everything, or whatever the, the public works department. There were 13 factories from the end of that yeah. that slushway yeah. to the Salmon River, and he owned three of them. And so he passed, at the time of his death, he was considered one of the wealthiest men in Middlesex County. So he set aside these funds that became the Purple Fund. So um, I, 
I was on the Board of Finance for eight years, and we were in a Board of Finance meeting talking about the Board of Ed budget, and uh, Dr. Durham, Mr. Durham was a superintendent at the time, I and he asked Dr. me, Durham. yeah, I just saw him this summer, believe it or not, he was playing golf with Hot Dog Durham. Oh, Hadn't seen him in years, a very nice man. Um, and uh, he asked me to come in and look at some statements, and I walked in, and he had on the table in the old Board of Ed building a stack of statements like this. Um, and at the time, the, the, the fund was managed by U.S. Trust, and there hadn't been a trade, not a single trade, not one stock, not one bond, in over 10 years. We looked through 10 years of statements. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so, not actively managed. No, not geez. actively managed. <laughs> so, and it, they were very, we were very fortunate that, that some of the things that they did own, they owned huge swaths of Pfizer, huge swaths of, of uh, um, IBM, you know, some things that had done really well. Um, but it was obviously undermanaged and underutilized by the, by the town. So we sat down and, and I, I wasn't on the committee, but I advised the committee and we tried to move things forward. And ultimately, um, U.S. Trust was bought by Merrill Lynch, who I worked for at the time, and they moved the money. They said, forget it. You're here all the time. You do it. And so that's what we did. We transferred it within the firm. So that's why I took this over. Um, and you know, this fund is, is different than a lot of funds because it really basically says, here's the money, and here, just you know, use it for the high school. So the closing value of this fund um, on whatever, June 11th, uh, was $9.5 million from that original $400,000. Um, <clears> uh, in the last four years, uh, this portfolio has only been down three months. Okay? So it's done, it's done very well over time. Um, if you look at the BART chart, which is next page after that. Someone's a very good investor. So that, that bar chart. So um, when I took when I took this fund over in 2008, it was about 6.2 million dollars. Um, at the at the end of the year, this bar chart is used when I calculate the budget, you know, the the amount I give to the budget uh, each year. Uh, it was 8.9 million dollars. As of the close of business today, it was 9.65 million dollars. All right, and up to the end of the year with our commitment for the budget this year, it's, it's put $3.6 million into the Board of Ed budget over the last decade. That doesn't include the check that we write tomorrow, or we wrote today, for the $500,000 that we contributed to the complex. So over 10 years, this fund, just the last 10 years, this fund has contributed .1, more than $4.1 million to the Board of Ed. You That's said you just uh, $500,000 for, for what, sports complex or? Yeah, so when they decide, when, when they were putting together the, the, I don't know, business case, I don't know what we would call it, Patty, when they were putting together how they were going to fund the sports right. complex, yep. they asked the Purple Fund if they would contribute. So we had a Purple Fund board meeting in conjunction with the Board of Ed, and the board voted to support that in, yep. and uh, $500,000. So, um, so that's what we did. You know, so that check went out. and. In the process that's been the last couple of years, we just never wrote the check. I had the money set aside in a <laughs> CD, so I might at some point somebody's going to ask me for this money. <laughs> so, so I had a meeting. Uh, some of these slides are, are reused from a meeting that I had with Valerie and Cindy yeah. a month ago, a month and a half ago, um, just to get them up to speed, so that we had a communication. So, so that money goes to the town now. So it goes to the yeah. It goes to the, the town. Right. To pay it goes to the treasurer. Set. Yeah, it goes to the office of the treasurer. Right. Yeah. You know. So, it's, but again, it's, it's on the board of it. Tax ID. Tax ID. Right. Yeah. Because the sports complex is a capital program, and the capital is not part of our operating budget, so therefore it's a town fund. I, I'm not. I'm just no. Yeah. I'm just clarifying so everybody kind of knows. Now, when you calculate this out, Tim, each year. You're taking the four percent of the last sixteen months on this one. Sixteen quarters. quarters. I'm four sorry. years. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So and we take four years of, and we average the quarters. Yeah. And it's four and a half percent of that amount. Okay. Okay. So you did the additional five fifty, uh, five hundred and fifty thousand. Make sure I make that clear for the sports complex. What was last year or this upcoming year that so you So the did? contribution this year will be three hundred eighty-four thousand five hundred dollars. Hopefully. Right, 384, 416. 
to the company. Exactly. And I will tell you this, I always is, do it exactly. Is that yeah. earmarked toward anything specific or it's just here go play? That's that's the so, interesting part of this this fund is it doesn't have the specifics that most of the other funds have and it's just to No, I understand that. I didn't school, know if you guys yeah. had set something. No, the committee has never set any further requirement. So the committee is actually stipulated the Board of Ed is the committee. Yeah. But they transfer the responsibility to an investment committee, which is the treasurer, the superintendent of schools, and a non-board of ed town member at large, okay. selected by, by you guys. So um, historically, we've used people from the board of finance. Or, you know, it's like we'll be building one. Yeah. Okay. So um, we don't have a written policy on this as far as setting up the committee for this. The policy, so the policy of those names, the three that yep. I gave you, is stipulated in the trust. Perfect. Okay. Right, so but we, we need to have something in our policy that reflects it too, I think. So what I want to do is, Dr. Sabrina, can you get the exact language from Tim as far as that goes, and then add that to the policy as an addendum, the one that has committees. So we don't need a whole new policy. But we gotcha. have a policy on committee, and then that would be an addendum to it. We can add that in. Okay. okay. Yeah. Do you follow me? Yeah. yeah. Concern. Well, it wouldn't good. be a policy of the board, though, because they just. It's not. It and I want it in there. I, I it's want not a committee of the board of ed. Right. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Right. Correct. But it should be. We'll figure out how to get that yeah. in there. But I want that somewhere documented. Yeah, right. yeah. Definitely. So that. I think okay. it could be in um, private endowments and receiving those endowments. Right. I think a policy like that would make sense because this is not the only fund. Correct. You're going to get to the next right. one. And there's right. no, Maybe. that's not really memorialized anywhere. Correct. In board policy. Exactly. Right. I, I think it's a different, it's more yeah. than just an investment. Okay, so just fund. make a note right. somewhere yeah, you're going to do that. I will, yeah, so just so you know, when I met with Cindy and Valerie, what I, what I do is I care. I have a book that has all the history and all yep. the documentation, copies of the original documentation. I'll, I'll, I will add the Ray School stuff to right. that because I do have that. And I'll get, sorry, Valerie and, and uh, Cindy will have a copy and I'll get a copy from the superintendent. Okay, okay. so um, is this stipulated that um, that it is the treasurer or the director of finance. It's the because treasurer. There was no director. Remember, there was a, right. never so a director of finance. Currently, it's Mary Jane Malavasi, Dr. Tabrino, and yourself. Correct? I am not on the committee. I am not. So advisor. you need. You still need a person yeah. at large. Member. And we yeah. need to name and that person. The no, board does. No. 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 Normally, no. it comes okay. out of a conversation. Right. You know, of, a community of, member. A community yeah. member. And it should be a community member with financial background. Is that what you're asking for? Are you uh, no, asking for somebody who just knows the town well? Historically, you know, you, you, if you have the treasurer, yeah, you know, the, between the treasurer and the superintendent's knowledge of the budgeting process, okay, that's usually the financial. Usually, the, the, yeah. the person that ended up being there has had yeah. a financial background because a lot of the time. Just for convenience sake, it was somebody on the board of finance. Okay. Okay, because originally, I don't, know, I don't know if you remember, Dave Mead yep. was on the committee. Yep. Uh, Sue Link was on the committee. Yeah. You know, so th those were, but those were people who were common knowledge between the, right. the superintendent mm -hmm. and the treasurer, and they were easy to get to. Bill de Cristofaro, maybe the one. Bill de Cristofaro was on the committee for a while. He was, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that those are, you know. Yep. Yep. Anybody like that, or if you, you know, okay. people I don't know, I have no idea. You know, okay. We'll discuss they that just don't then. want us. They, they, right. What I think he ultimately was looking for was somebody in between the yep. two sides, so that was. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, you know, so if you look at the exhibit here, that's what I was going to say. The, the 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 pool of cash that's in the portfolio right now is about 1.2 million dollars. Um, that is far more than we would normally carry, but I did write those checks this week um, to Valerie. For the eight hundred thousand, the four hundred thousand will be used to rebalance the portfolio after the cash comes out. So a, there's a mathematical. It just happened to be the date that I snapped the picture of the of the investments. So. Awesome, thank you. Um, 
So then, you said you wrote the check to Valerie. Well, it goes. It's the it's stipulated in the trust that it goes. I didn't write it to Valerie. I wrote it to right, the town, but okay. know, she's the one who does the book entries. So she, it comes to her attention just because. It's written out to the like town of your house. Yeah, it says okay. in the it's stipulated yeah. in the document that the check would be issued to the to the treasurer of the town of East Town. Right. Okay. 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 Perfect. And, that, and to be honest with you, I, I realized I need to educate myself on the on the differences. We, for so long, it was Cindy. So she had yeah. both sides of the, you know, she had both sides of the, the coin. Right. Um, but that's why I did the meeting too with so, Valerie and and Cindy at the same time. So and they seemed to be fine. So with kind me. of jumping ahead, but while I'm thinking of it, is there a book in the town that has all of this like information, like what the policies of these or the stipulations are of these endowments like yeah. is there a so that's what I was just talking about the yeah. document I'm putting together there there had been okay yeah. the book that I have was not unique at one point right but there's been a lot of transition since then uh, so I'm recreating oh, the, the, right. the story for everybody and what I am going to do is add the race school to it so. fantastic and so we'll have you're, everything you're in one place I'll add, the, I'll add the same details so right. I don't manage the race school money right that's okay. managed by uh, Bank of America, but I can I have all the information because right, right, so I'll put that in there so all right. four of these funds will be sat in one place, right? And you'll be able to just refer to them as necessary. It it seems to me it might be useful if you're going to put that stuff together. We could get some of it and um, house some of those records at the historical society in town. Yeah, so there is quite a bit. There's a great town. deal of information. Right. Right. What's that? It, all of this would be filed in the town clerk's office as well, right? Yeah, I can as check far with as deeds and everything. Well, That's there's, there's quite a bit of information about the Ray family, right? And the at the, the uh, in the historical society as well as Purple and Selman. Okay. They were they were very active in the community. As a matter of fact, the research I did on Purple and Selman I pulled from the historical society. Okay. Pictures, you know, I had the book has, has pictures of their shop, and I just thought it was really quite unbelievable. Um, and as you, you know, as Board of Ed members, this is something that actually goes on. This is, this is happening a lot right now in our world because there's a, a huge generational wealth transfer going on in the world right now. They say it's four and a half trillion dollars because, because of the tax laws about um, moving wealth to children, yeah. you know, moving your uh, estate tax exemptions, which can change in 2025. So there's money moving around. So you, you know, you never know what you're going to hear, and it's right. kind of an interesting idea, you know, that, you know, to think that, you know, I, I don't mean to be cavalier about it, but two hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand right. dollars could be ten million dollars, and over the course of its life, it's getting tens of millions of dollars to the board of it. Right. So, you know, just an interesting legacy conversation. Okay. So, that being that, um, so uh, the Ray School. The Ray, the Ray School Board, the Ray School Corporation, it's got a number of names because of the way it was established. Um, so, uh, Frederick Ray passed in 1926, and that's when this whole process started. Uh, as a memorial to his parents, he, uh, I'm gonna read this, this is actually a clip out of the actual um, will. Um, as a memorial to my father and mother, James S. Ray and Mary B. Ray, I desire to found in the said town of East Haddam an educational institution offering courses of instruction similar to those of a high school grade, in which, however, vocational instruction in manual training and the useful arts shall be emphasized. The institution to be primarily for the benefit of the inhabitants of said town and the town of Haddam. It is my intention that this educational advantage shall be applied insofar as blah, blah, blah. So that goes on. But that's an actual clip from the picture of it, the picture of the will that I have. And um, but his focus was explicit, and he provided a, an accumulated 2.2 million dollars um, that included everything from teachers, supplies, buildings, up into and including a dormitory. He was willing to build a dormitory to bring wow. people in to pick up these skills. His whatever it is, great, 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 great granddaughter, Aaron Ray Heisey, is the president of the Ray Board, which is a really um, excellent legacy, and, and uh, she's great at it. Um, and 
uh, so the committee, the Ray Board Committee, uh, we probably have seen around, but there are um, seven of us right now. The Ray Board has been totally reconfigured in the last six years. Uh, six years ago, a gentleman by the name of Peter Dean called me. I sat on the board of finance with him. He asked me to join the Ray Board. Um, and when I walked in there on my first day, I was 26 years behind the next closest new person on the Ray Board. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what had happened was the, the Ray Board was three people or four people from town and six people from U.S. Trust. Okay. That is what we nowadays call a conflict of interest. The bank was, they were the ruling members of the board and they managed all the money. So they theoretically could have voted them to pay themselves 56% of the, you know, whatever. So that, that ended um, and uh, we've rebuilt the board um, since then. So the only uh, person that's still on the board um, from that point is uh, Jimmy Curtin um, and he is our, you know, uh, our historian and he keeps us from straying from the path too far uh, but uh, excellent guy was on the board so he was on the board for has been on the board for over 20 years um, and I think he's dying to get off but <laughs> he can't. We, we know which I yeah. step on his foot every time I don't want exactly. to make beans yeah. or really nothing but uh, so myself Ann Comer who is a CPA she is our treasurer and she is fantastic and uh, went through and went through the books, and um, uh, Terry at, at the Board of Ed does all our, writes all our checks and does all that work for us. Uh, but she sat down, spent a ton of time with Ann, and Ann got every I dot and every T crossed, and it's pretty that impressive. sounds like Ann. Yeah, it is, it is no <laughs> doubt her. Uh, and Aaron uh, came in, um, uh, Fern Tremblay, yeah. and uh, Kevin yeah. Staley, Junior, yeah, Junior. yeah, Thank and you. Kevin Staley, and yeah. Jimmy, and myself. So that's where we are now. And um, who's the other gentleman? Oh, I'm missing. You're missing our um, Boag teacher. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, the industrial arts teacher. Industrial arts retired. teacher. Help, oh, help us out, Kelly. Who retired? Who yeah. retired a couple years ago? Oh yeah, he was. At he loves dinner. sailing. Oh, this I'm is all. I know who you mean. I can't yeah, think of his name. Yeah. I'll look it up. I, I'll think yes. of it in a second. Yep. I can see him like he's sitting. Exactly. Here. I can't believe it. Was he just at graduation? Yes. Yes, he was. Yeah. Okay. What's his name? <laughs> oh my I God! I feel that. terrible. I, I do too. There. I'll come up with that in a second. It'll come back. Three o'clock in the morning, people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce. Bruce Freeman. Bruce Freeman. Bruce Freeman. There we go. God. Sorry, Bruce. Sorry, Bruce. That was terrible. I'm so sorry. Anyhow. So just that's where it all started. Memorialized on tape now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's, <laughs> I'm sure Bruce is going to listen to the meeting. And I'll be <laughs> um, so that original two million dollars has gone. It built the Ray Wing on the on this building that we took down. We took down to build this to, when it was restructured. Um, it's bought countless amounts of equipment. Uh, it contributes to teacher salaries. It does granting, it does all kinds of things. It contributes to graduation. Yeah. The fund is broken down into two pieces. Once again, there is what they call the trust under will, which is just a lazy name for the original fund. That is $10.4 million. Your, your number is old. It took me till today to get the number from the, from the bank. Mm -hmm. that, that fund is $10.38 million. And then the grant fund, uh, which is what we use to augment our contribution to the general board of ed budget that that's stipulated to salaries and, and things like that um, is 2.38 million just shy of 2.4 million dollars uh, uh, that we use for additional expenses um, and do you do the same calculations it's an identical calculation um, four and a half percent from the large fund and we, based on what opportunity we have for giving grants, what kind of programs we see, what kind of requests we get from teachers, we'll modify the other fund to suit what we're trying to do. There is no stipulation in the investment policy on the grant fund about how much we can pull out of it. Okay. Right, so we can do whatever we see fit, but we try to, 
we've never moved outside between three and a half percent and five percent. So it's been. Does the committee, does the rate board committee have a set of bylaws that they stay within? Yes. That we should be aware of. Tim? So yeah. So what happens is they have investment policy statements that they yep. work under. They have guidelines, you know, from yep. the, the will, and uh, we go through a complete budgeting process just like you do. Right. So it's a it's far more detailed than what the Purple Fund does. Yeah. Uh, and I'll include all that stuff, whatever the param the okay. parameters that we work under, and we modify. We did the the um, it's no longer U.S. Trust. It's called Bank of America Private yep. Wealth. They fidget with the with uh, uh, investment policy every year for whatever crazy reason, but um, but you'll, you'll have a current, the current one and okay. it'll change once a year. So. Okay. Uh, go ahead. How does the budget process work? Do you, does the Ray Board Committee start the budget process or is the budget process started by the liaison at the high school working with the yeah. How is that starts working? with the teachers. Okay. Okay. So what happens is they put together what they feel they're going to need for the expenses that we cover, which okay. I, I don't know if it, I don't, certainly don't think it's all of them, but it's a considerable amount. And right. you know all the animal feed, all the and the industrial supplies that they use yep. to make you know all the different projects right. and things like that, um, and it all comes in. We actually our budget format looks exactly like yours. And it's right. just different, I think it's different ledgers or whatever, yes. I call them ledgers, but whatever they, whatever right. they call them, different accounts. And um, so we actually literally sit and go through, we do two meetings. We do one with this, the education staff and then we do our own meeting. And we go through and they, it changed a lot when it was no longer the banking control because right. we, a lot of us have a financial background. So we were going through it line by line and learning a lot about, you know, where the money goes and, you know, do we really, are his money, better spent here or there and um, you know and we have the you know kind of the bandwidth to do that something that Ann and I have done all our career so um, you know it, that the, the, the point on what that budget is going to the you know the pencil's a lot sharper than it was so we're trying to make sure that money goes to the best places that augment you know what the teachers are trying to do. So in your bylaws I'm sorry to ask so many no. questions but this is kind of important uh, a lot of this. In your bylaws, not the will, but in your bylaws, do you stipulate in there that there must be a liaison teacher that is no. okay, so there's no stipulation there. No, I don't I not to the okay. best of my recollection. I'd have okay. to go back and read them. I'm just curious if yeah. there if somewhere it's documented that you know, the, the liaison is, has always played a significant role. Right. I will tell you that. But I yes. came in when Bruce Freeman, who's now on the board, right. was the liaison. Um, and but, Bruce had been there for like 20 years. So yeah. where my concern is, is like, you know, Bruce was there for so, so long. Yeah. And I would hope that our other teachers would be there that long, but you can't ever guarantee it. Yeah, so, so what we've done, the process that we've come to is we sit and the teachers are invited to every meeting. So we do okay. our meetings in two parts. We do a, a kind of an open meeting with all the, you know, yep. the principal and all the teachers. Whoever's available is welcome to come, ask, talk about programs, because we always start about, our question is what's going on? What are you doing? What's mm -hmm. happening? What's going, you know, what, what's coming up? Mm -hmm. And um, so we have a very open conversation. Uh, during the budget process, all, all the educators are there. Yep. And we ask directly. Okay. What benefit are we getting from this money? Right? Is there a benefit to this? Is there something that's missing? If, you know, and you know, we we put those questions out there to see. I, mean, I have right. no axe to grind. You know, right. whatever. So we're trying to make a very open conversation mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that we we're using the money where it, it benefits the programs the most. It benefits the students. We get the programs and cares, right. but that benefits the students and. Um, you know, having uh, you know, having as many people from outside, you know, different different roles, different walks of life. It, you know, I think it's kind of opened the conversation quite a bit as to you know where right. what can we do, what can we what can we find outside and bring inside. And right. you know, we have you have your board liaisons. Sean right. uh, has been at meetings and we've talked quite a bit about it. Um, we're doing some, we're doing a lot of work with the work study program. We fund the work study program about sixteen thousand dollars a year into work study. We just opened that up. Um, we added some funds this year. 
uh, because the library lost their interns, they, they lost the funding for their interns. Um, but uh, you know, after some conversation, quite a bit of conversation, it seemed like a good program, so we were able to add some funds to that. So we have yeah. two interns from the high school working at the libraries full time over the summer, um, and uh, you know, we're 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 looking. <coughs> that's one of the areas that we're looking at really carefully is how do we find opportunities for kids to work, to get out and work, do work something. Work actually in the field. Yeah. And just so that the board is aware, so the teachers in that department, they collaborate together and they kind of come up with a schedule. So one year, it might be the culinary that um, will say, I need a new dishwasher this year. And then the next year, it might be something in Mrs. Carberry's or Mrs. Peace room. And they, they kind of work together as a team. That team is very, very cohesive. And they kind of yeah. have their own. Yeah, we, have a, we really have a capital budget right. cycle, just like you have. Yeah. For, well, I know yeah. they have it for the town. I presume you have it in here. Yeah. Stuff gets fixed. Same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any concern? And I, this is kind of out of Tim's purview, but where I see the line item that says field trips specifically, we don't have money in our budget for field trips. So when we have a conversation with uh, Ray Wing about the money that's allocated to them and field trips come up, this specialty department is getting field trips where other departments are not getting field trips. Is that the truth? Is this how yeah, this works? We fund field, field, field trips, trips in the budget. Yeah. This year we cut them. all the field trips. Yeah, all we cut budget. new ones. No, no. We cut new ones that we were going We funded a lot there. of field trips. Um, we have a lot of field trips. I was very concerned about that. Yeah. Where one yeah. group of kids is getting field trips. Well, even even so, if it's kind of dictated in a, in a will, yes. oh, the, uh, yeah. So, I mean, and I will say this, I, I, a lot of the field trips, what happens is a lot of the, a lot of these classes do field study work. Right. So, you know. It's different yeah. than a going it's on It's different than, trip, you know, yes. Dinosaur State right. Park or whatever, right. you know. But the thing. word field trip. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, You know, so the uh, like so the other thing that we did this year is we we replaced the bus. The, if you've seen the Ag yeah. bus, mm -hmm. the Ag bus, uh, the the other one was forever old, um, and it was it needed to be replaced. We're putting a lot of because we also maintain all the we in our budget is the maintenance for most of the equipment in that wing, which includes all the industrial arts equipment and all that stuff. And the bus was one of those things, and um, so uh, we looked at it. Uh, we went out, got a bid for a new bus, bought bought the new bus. Um, which is a whole story in its own right, but it's, it's done. <laughs> so we have the bus, and they were able to use it quite a bit this year, which was great. Um, they did a bunch of different things. They were able to get out into the community more, which is great. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that we're trying to do. So one of the things we did this year, and you see it underlined in there, we were having a conversation about the, the building that they're putting together for the industrial arts and, and BOAG program up the high school, and we really felt we wanted to make, we wanted to put a Ray Board stamp on that. So what we did is we pulled fifty thousand dollars. We put together a grant fund so that as they perfect that facility, that they have access, you know, they have access through our grant process to say, hey, what, this is the, you know, this is this machine is going to make a difference, or this, whatever, this technology is going to make a difference, um, and uh, you know, so I think that that money is going to go a long way in that process. But we were able to do that and without having to jump around a bunch of things, and that's the. To the best of my knowledge, that's the first time that the Ray Board has done something like that in many, many years. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking to do is to say, hey, we don't want to take money out of our regular grant process. Let's continue to do that, which, by the way, the grant process is open to all the departments. So this year we, we did, we ran some grants for uh, the science department. They had some, you know, kind of interesting equipment that they were looking for about velocity and, and acceleration and whatever. And a couple of years ago, we bought them these like rockets that that, oh, yeah. that that were tied to some technology, and this adds on to that process. And we've done we did speakers and equipment for the music department and stuff like that. So the grant process we open up to you know whatever opportunities are are out there. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a really it's a it's a really amazing thing. Um, it's you know, and it's a very current conversation. Um, you know, in a lot of in a lot of places, and uh, so it's it's interesting that uh, 
it's an interesting time to be there. The, the board is really um, pretty dynamic, good group of people, that's a lot awesome. of energy for what they're trying to do. And um, yeah, so you know, that's, that's what they do. So yeah, so this year's contribution in overall was about $421,000. Um, so about half of that goes to salaries, uh, and then a bunch of it's broken down into other stuff. But uh, like $370,000 is to the, goes to the regular budget process, and then another $50,000 to the to the grant uh, program. We do give some scholarships and things like that. I think the scholarships will increase next year. Right. For what we do, so. so do those checks go to the town no. as well? So How the, is the, all yeah, of that, that managed? managed? Okay. Because that's been a so, question for Well, years. and it's changed. So, yeah. okay. so what happened with the Ray Board has its own tax ID number. We are individually audited. We are totally, it's actually called the Ray School Corporation if you look it up right. in tax records, okay? So it is its own entity. Terry Hungerford runs our checking account for us. Dr. DeBrito, Ann Comer. We have four possible signatories, right? Cindy. Uh, Cindy and uh, Aaron, right? Yes. Aaron our fourth. So, which after the bus thing, she says she'll never sign another check in her life. <laughs> so anyhow, um, so uh, we have signatories. The money goes into that account, and Terry distributes it. Okay, but it's done that way because we have our own thing. The other thing that we do is we tie everything out. So if you tell me you're going to spend $100 on gerbil food, there's a PO for $100 on mm -hmm. gerbil food. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's just like it. You know, I think it's probably less steps than the big school budget process, but we. So there's some accountability built in, is what you're saying. Absolutely, and if, if the expense doesn't get made, the money does the money doesn't go into the pool. It stays with us. So some okay. of the things that we've been able to do over the last few years were money that didn't get spent in other ways. So thick field trips that didn't Perfect. happen, magazine subscriptions, that was memberships, and things. So that was the big deal when when Ann came in. That's one of the processes that we went through and tied all that stuff out because there was money Excellent. in that checking account, and we were like. Why is that there? You know, mm -hmm. Why is there one hundred and forty thousand dollars? That's how we bought the bus. Right. right? The bus was eighty-eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That was money that was left over from programs or things that never got bought. So, we we are on it. So we know exactly the the grant uh, that we're doing for the new shop. About half of that is coming from excess money in the checking account. Beautiful. All right. So that clears up. Yeah. And what happened is yeah. at some point. Okay. At some point the checking account was opened up under the school tax ID and we kind of lost so we were paying for Correct. an audit. So we were paying for an audit and they never said the tax ID doesn't match. Right. Ten thousand dollars. I said that's the last time. Please tell me you audit. got someone else to do the audit. Yeah we did. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 they got they didn't get uh, you know a friend of the bank. Yeah. They got me and Ann. Like, okay, here's how much we're gonna pay you. Because we could do this ourselves. This is not. It's a this account. is not rocket science, right? Yeah. So we have, we ultimately got everybody in place. The, you know the big song and dance to go sign the checkbook thing and all that. So we've got all that squared so away. So everything been, now is squared, and there's a a really well run system in place of checks balances yep. that the Ray board is happy with, that the school system is happy with as well. <laughs> correct. So I, that's something that I think needs to increase is the right. knowledge because it seems to be like an island over here right? and then I get the check request after the fact, right? So right. that right. we're going to, I think, in policy can create that structure internally it has nothing to do with the race school mm -hmm. corporation but just so that the big picture for yeah. the district yep. makes sense and that the Board of Ed is also aware yeah. Um, the other thing recently we talked about was sending a delegation to the national convention, which I think yep. is really important for oh, students and some national adults. National convention of FFA. FFA. Yeah. Good. Yes. I, yeah, especially. Well, I, I'm sure our speaker a, will be right. going. Right. That's so right. To have because some she's for her. the state yeah. winner, so then she moves on First to compete. Nationals. But to send a delegation as opposed just that one, yeah, it would I agree totally. add and revive, I think, especially if we have officers, yeah. right, we want to revive the program, right? That's Couldn't what agree we more. 
Yeah. So that that was great. To I hear. was in the FFA in 1980 something. Did you go to a national convention? No, we had some local ones. So Starting to say how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> on their right window. Let me just hands. tell you that the leadership qualities definitely have come through. There we go. The um, yeah. So what we just need to get a grant together, maybe you and I can talk yeah, and draft something up for the, okay. for the board. Like I said, it really supportive, especially when we had that little weirdo thing that we weren't going to be part of the other day and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That whole that crazy whole rumor. It was weird. That was but it would be good, it'd be good to offset, one you know, close it out by uh, with great It caused guns. a little firestorm and yeah. it was misinformation or somebody was yeah. backtracking. And but I think you went Ultimately, that we, well, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, found out it was it was right. bad channel, but but it's fine. But and we've never missed a payment. Yeah. We've always been members yeah. of the FFA. So, so now going forward, one of the things we did is we we in our permanent budget we put the FFA dues forever. Yeah. So it'll be Perfect. in our budget every year. Makes sense. Online item. Yeah, it's not enough money to even really think about. But I think mm -hmm. you know to to Just expand to that relationship. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's you know it'll be on the calendar between Excellent. Ann and Terry. And if we could um, <laughs> incorporate the rain board budget into yes, our budget. Our, yeah, for knowledge, right? right to to see knowledge, now. but yeah. not to vote upon. Right. But so I, I do, think I that do has agree. to be a separate I thing. Well, I think one of the things now. I can probably do, too, is I can send you what what I do is I generate for the other funds, I generate everything that, you know, I generate a number mm -hmm. on, this, on January 5th. It's right. on my calendar, and I generate what well, the contribution from the the purple fund, or the Palmer fund, the town fund, but all that, and it goes to Cindy and and right. I can add that I think by then the rate board is done too. We okay. usually know what it is, and so we can chip that okay. number to you at that time, so you know what the number is. Um, you know, but normally what happens is we calculate the number, and we haven't we haven't seen our budget, like the budget hasn't come to us yet, so we don't really you know. Just right. because the money's available doesn't mean we need to spend sure. it. Sure. So Correct. we just, you know, so that's one of the right. hedges that they, you know, that I think is probably out there. Right? Right. 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 So we can get sent. You know, right. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, the, yeah. you know, the story. So, yeah. Um, so, um, that's that's what I put together for you tonight. Um, if you have questions. Um, the last page on there has my, I think, has my yeah, company yeah. email, and uh, that's mm -hmm. my my phone number that rings through to here 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, so, can if you I have any questions, anything, question? else. what's that? Can I ask a random question? You can ask every question you want. So, in the Ray will, it also says the town of Haddam. Do they still? Yeah, they do not. I, I, to be honest with you, I almost chopped it off because it freaks that. me out a little bit every time I read it. I don't know why it was in there. I'm sure it has something to do with the history of the where the land the was yes. in yeah. the 20s. Yeah. Yes. Because East yeah. Haddam was divided, and I only know this from pulling up all of my deeds back from 1918 on. Is you know and you can research so, it because I had yeah. the same thing. So that's just a, some original yeah. 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 language, so it's right? Yeah. I mean that document was actually drafted in like 19. 18 or 1922 mm -hmm. or something like that. So, so yeah, so I think it's a bit different. Yeah, because it was nothing else mentions Adam except that right. line. Wow. So I think they they probably tacked it on to make sure that you know Just cross them off. Little Susie and Johnny <laughs> yeah. from Adam Neck could participate or whatever. And at that point, yeah, things were very different. Yeah. Tim, I want to thank you so much from um, on behalf of this board, but on behalf of East Adam. The amount of work and volunteerism that you do in managing these, and I, I say this not just as a board member, but as a, as a resident, because I've been going to these budget meetings since 1975, and every year you're bringing a presentation, you're thorough. These accounts are just spectacular. And I really think that we, the town owes you a huge thank you for the amount of time, dedication, and just talent. The talent that you <laughs> that you bring to this. I appreciate it. it it's it, I enjoy it. It's it's a nice way to connect my community and my job. Right. Right. So it's uh, I I've always enjoyed it, and it's uh, well, it's good. You know, whatever. 
it's fun. I appreciate he had it. never retired. No, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Thank you for coming yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. I know this is an extra night out. Uh, yeah, people, this was people so who important. People have plenty of nights out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So, oh, no, we really appreciate yeah. it. We My appreciate everything you do. And, thanks. And um, thank you so much, too, for including us in the Ray Board decisions and at those meetings. I'm, I'm excited that we have um, eager board members who want to participate. We want to see the whole program grow. I think, I, I think combined-wise, we're really going to do some great stuff. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I know the conversation, on the, the, one of the conversations we're having on the board is trying to get a board member at each board of that meeting. Oh, uh, so wonderful. We're trying to look at work schedules okay. and stuff because a lot of people are traveling and busy. So uh, uh -huh. we're around, and if anything comes up where we can, you know, when we can be of advantage or you'd like, a, you know, whatever our support or something, just shoot, shoot me an email. Somebody will, okay. somebody will get there and we'll get it out to the board. Uh, like sure. I said, the board is really responsive. Would the, member, would the member come and give a report? It's, I mean, it's up to you. Um, you know, I, I, you know, most of the time, once our budget is done, it's just in place. But if you had any questions or you want to know about the budget, you know, I think certainly one of our goals would be after we get our budget done, is to make sure that there's a conversation so that we sure. you know, so we're all on the same one. We know we don't we know we don't you know, we're not changing policy or changing curriculum is the word I'm looking for. Sure. Or anything like that, but we want to be supportive of whatever goals you're putting forward to. Sure. So do you wanna go into then and we can work this out more in detail, um, to one of our budget presentations so we do like the high school the elementary school the middle school and then we'll do the rain you know rain board I, I would and we could yeah. do that and or, usually or maybe, that's about an hour or so i was going to say patty maybe not just the rain board maybe the the donation funds because there's more yeah. that you got the rain board you got the yeah. board. i would do them all Okay. Do them in one shot. Yeah. Do them all in one shot, and yeah. I think that would be an endowment um, thing. So yeah, tack it on we'll have to remember that, right. Kelly, too, for when we go to do the budget calendar for next year. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll figure out what, what and, you need. And for the record, um, since I'm charged with leading policy and instruction around here, if you have things that you think need to be addressed, um, yes, you can have an influence. Yeah. We owe you at least giving you a good listen, if yeah. nothing more. Mm -hmm. oh, I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, the, the board would be yeah. glad to hear that. Um, you Seriously. know, I, I think everybody's trying to, like I said, we, we just want to make sure we're not, you know, going in one direction. And, you know, Correct. Going and going that's why I kind of want to have that book, that master book, yep. and also incorporate a policy that will say you will follow, the Board of Education will follow the, the terms of each of these endowments and, you know, okay. and such Yeah, and so, so and we'll get the, the, we'll get the um, purple fund up and running pretty quickly. Okay. And then I think probably the, the smart mm -hmm. thing to do is, as we talked about, is tie the Sprecher fund, make that the same committee. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have Sounds. two things going on and I involve agree. the high school. I the, remember the Spreckers. Yeah. Yeah, so that wasn't that long ago. That's sitting around. I mean, they, they gave away they sure did. tens of millions of dollars of, I uh, remember of that. control. Yeah. They, yeah, very interesting character. Um, yeah. So, anyhow, um, anything else? Yeah, thank you so much. Anybody want to talk about soccer? Yeah, really following, even following. Oh uh, well, no, I yeah. Coaching, coaching. Well, coach. Coach. Well, I stopped playing after I had my knee replaced two years ago. But oh, I did not know that. Yeah, that was. That was uh, I didn't want to, but I really didn't have a choice. Yeah. But anyhow, thank you for your time. I really thank you. It. Thank you, and I hope you have power when you go home. I I do. I was able to dive into the shower before oh, I came you. here, which was good. So. And give our best to Lisa too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll bug out. Great. Great. Um, Board of Education annual self review. Did everybody bring their notes with them? Yes. I did that. Did you bring everything for board self review? Yeah. Printed out. Yeah, I brought it, but I didn't print it out because I didn't. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I actually, I appreciate the time. I was going to say, I actually did my stuff on a Google Doc, and I should be able to fix it. Yeah, you can call my I know. Boston, Hartford, New Jersey, Dallas, San Antonio. So we're missing all stadiums are going to be Tan and Sean. And you can sign up. I hate to table it, but I feel that this is a board conversation, and having us not have two of our members here. It's a problem. That is yeah. Yeah. You guys yeah. with that? Yeah. Do you want to tell Kelly not to bother? Sure, right now. That she doesn't need to right. All right, so the board review is Annual review, correct. By Tim. So moved. Okay. I'll be right back. I got to work. Okay. And, and um, Laurel and Laurel. Laurel. That we table at Terry Second up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does that include roles and responsibilities as well? Yes, because yeah, that's okay. underneath there. Yeah, so the whole of B is table. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, perfect. Laurel Terry. Oh, Terry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just directing you. <laughs> All right. Um, We'll want to Next give that. is uh, Lindy was here we'll tonight. We didn't say to Kelly when she yeah. comes back. Yep. Um, accept, acceptance of the following resignation. Uh, Lindy Cammy, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Sadly, a second. Well, she was here tonight. We yes. said something. My daughter. Yeah. Any further discussion? The, the um, large. Uh, Large role to fill. She's been very good. Not that yeah. mm -hmm. for the elementary kids. And right. she's been through the whole thing. I mean, she started when the computer room was like a hundred monitors, and that she was like the eight, yeah, the tech yeah. support for there. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next is discussion on hiring school psychologists. Yes, Amanda Dodd. Um, lovely. Uh, so. Typically, you don't really have a discussion. You kind of just accept it under consent agenda. Yeah, so I, I don't know why it has discussion. Yeah, I don't know. I think our original agenda did not have discussion. Right, so I don't know why it changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's well, I have the original agenda here, and I agree. I the posted one is correct. I'm sorry about The posted that. one is correct. Yep. So that's what you mean by the original agenda. Yeah, sorry yes. about that. Yeah. So, yeah, no yeah. so you'll like, approve that hiring. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. All right, we have um, a personnel matter that we are going to discuss in the executive session. Yeah, and so then, do I need to yep, shut the windows? Yep, oh, hold on. And the evaluation of the superintendent. Can I have a motion to go into a second session and invite the superintendent in? Still moved. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Great. I'm going to call a five-minute recess, and then we will...